This video is to help you revise the circulatory system and it's geared towards the Irish Leaving Cert course. The circulatory system is made up of three parts, the first of which is the heart, which acts as the pump. And then there are the blood vessels, the tubes in which the blood flows, arteries, veins and capillaries. Then there's the blood, which is made up of red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, all floating around in a liquid matrix called plasma. So what is the role of the circulatory system? Why do you need it? It's a transport system. Every single cell in the body requires or needs oxygen and nutrients, and these are delivered in the blood. At the same time, the wastes that are generated by these cells need to be collected and removed, and so they're collected in the blood. Large organisms such as us humans and other animals, we need a circulatory system because we're too big and too active to rely on diffusion. We describe our circulatory system as a closed system. This means that the blood always remains in a vessel, such as the artery, the vein or the capillary. Capillaries are the smallest of the vessels. They're only one cell thick, so they're made up of a single layer of endothelial cells. And when substances need to enter or leave the blood, they do so by passing either through the cells or larger molecules through gaps in the cells. A closed circulatory system offers some benefits. Firstly, it's much more efficient. Because the blood is flowing at high pressure, it means that the nutrients can reach the cells really quickly. And as well as that, blood flow can be controlled, so the blood flow to particular organs can be controlled. Central to your circulatory system is the heart. It's a muscular pump. It's located in your thorax or your chest cavity just in between your lungs. It's about the size of your fist and it beats on average 72 beats per minute. So you can imagine that the cells that make up this muscular pump require a lot of oxygen and a lot of nutrients. The heart is made up of three layers. The outer layer, which covers the external surfaces of the heart, is called the pericardium. It's there for protection. In between both layers of the pericardium, a fluid is secreted and this allows for the friction-free movement of the heart, so the pericardium is there for protection. The middle layer is known as the myocardium and it's made of cardiac muscle, which is very special because it does not fatigue, it does not tire. The heart is labelled as if you're looking in on someone else's heart or you're operating on someone else's heart. So the left side, it pumps oxygen rich blood and the right side pumps blood lacking in oxygen. And the left and the right side are separated by a wall called the septum. The heart is made up of four chambers, two smaller chambers on the top known as the atria, the left atrium and the right atrium, two larger chambers on the bottom, the ventricles, the left ventricle and the right ventricle. It's also important to note that the left ventricle wall is much thicker than the right ventricle wall and you must draw it like that. The top chambers are separated from the bottom by valves, the bicuspid valve on the left and the tricuspid valve on the right. It's important to know that the bicuspid valve has two flaps and the tricuspid valve on the right has three flaps. There are also two sets of semilunar valves and each valve has three flaps or cusps. The heart valves are really important because they prevent the backflow of blood. They keep the blood flowing in one direction only. When we're looking at the blood flowing or entering into the heart, it enters through a vein. Veins lead into the heart. So let's look at the left hand side. Blood enters the heart through a pulmonary vein and it enters into the left atrium. This is oxygenated blood. It's just returned from the lungs. And blood enters into the right side of the heart, the right atrium, through two veins, the superior and inferior vena cava. This blood is lacking in oxygen and needs to go to the lungs. So when blood is flowing away from the heart, it's leaving in an artery. So let's take a look at the left side of the heart. So we already know that the blood entered through a pulmonary vein into the left atrium. It passes through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. The left ventricle wall will contract and this forces the blood out of the heart in the aorta. So it leaves the heart in that blood vessel, the aorta. As the blood exited the heart, it passed through a semilunar valve and valves keep the blood flowing in one direction only. So the blood is going to go all around the body and back to the right side of the heart, back to the right atrium. The left ventricle wall is thicker than the right because it has to pump the blood further. Deoxygenated blood entered the right atrium and passes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. It then exits the heart through the pulmonary artery and it's on its way to the lungs to receive oxygen. The blood now rich in oxygen will enter the left atrium and the cycle starts again. So really the heart is two pumps in one. You have the septum separating the left side and the right side of the heart, the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. This makes the heart really efficient. 
The left side deals with the systemic circuit, pumping the blood to the body and back to the heart again. And then the right side of the heart deals with the pulmonary circuit, pumping the blood to the lungs and back to the heart again. So you need to know how to draw the heart and to label it. This is asked often in the exam papers. So start with the chambers, the atria and then the ventricles. And from there lead into the valves, the bicuspid valve, the tricuspid valve and the semilunar valves followed by the blood vessels. Don't forget to also include the chordae tendineae, the heartstrings, and very important, the papillary muscles to which they are attached. So that was a very basic introduction to the circulatory system. Remember to always use your textbook and to do past papers and note the icons are from the Noun Project. Best of luck.